Well, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Thank you for coming and worshiping with, uh, with us today. Your presence is very much appreciated and valued here. I hope you are having a wonderful Labor Day weekend and enjoying this weather and uh, the kind of relaxation as summer comes to a close and we prepare for fall to begin. Um, let's open with an opening prayer. Good and gracious God, you know our, our pains and our hopes and our dreams. You know what we are feeling, what we are experiencing, and you are with us, and we thank you for your presence among us as we come today to worship you, to praise you, and to acknowledge your presence with us. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the one who fashions us, the one who heals us, the one who reforms us again and again. Amen. Trust in God's promises of forgiveness. Let us confess our sin against God and one another. I invite you to take a moment of silent reflection. Source of all life, we confess that we have not allowed your grace to set us free. We fear that you are not enough. For, we are your word freely given to us. Yet we expect others to hear. We turn the word in word rather than moving it outward. Forgive us, stir us, reform us to be a church powered by love, willing to speak for what is right act for what is just, and seek the healing of your whole creation. Amen. God hears our cry and sends the Spirit to change us and to empower our lives in the world. Our sins are forgiven. God's love is unconditional and we are raised up as God's people who will always be made new. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Take a time to share this peace with your neighbors.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the peace of with you. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
and mercy here daily attend thee. Wonder anew all the Almighty can do. He who with love doth be friend thee. Praise to the Lord, O Lord. The first lesson is from Jeremiah chapter 15. O Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable? refusing to be healed. Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, <clears throat> I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they, this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in Innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving, 
and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said, I, this is the wrong reading. <laughs> the page didn't get turned there we go the holy gospel according to matthew the 16th chapter from the time on after peter's confession jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. You, this time I invite, you may be seated, I invite the children to come forward. Anyone else? Come on up. So, our saying for today is 
Let love be genuine. Anybody know what this is? What is this? Is it a rubber band? Yeah. Has anyone ever snapped you with one? Yeah, well, if anyone's ever snapped you with one, you'll know that it hurts. And if you saw someone make, getting this, it's called tension, doing this, you'd probably wince or run or hide behind a pew. What happens here when you get tension is it gets really tight, right? And what we, when we experience tension, this tightness, you can experience that when you're with people too. Like you walk in a room and, and it's just really, really kind of, you don't want to be there, right? You're like, okay, this is not comfortable. I want to go away. And when we move back and away from someone, when they're upset and hurting, you know what? That creates this, this tension. You know how you get rid of this? You move in. So when someone, and you're not, you kind of don't want to be around because they're like hurting or, or kind of feeling like, hmm, this room is tense would be the word. We can move in with love. And love relieves the tension. Let your love be genuine. Love one another. You know what this looks like? Okay, so say you broke a flower vase that had really pretty flowers in it. And then you don't want to tell mom and dad that you broke the vase. That would be this, moving away. But if you go in and you tell them, you know what? I think they'd be pretty forgiving and they would love you. You probably might have to do something to make up for breaking the vase, but you would not have to worry. You could move in and be loved. So love breaks the tension. Move in, not away. Let's pray. You can repeat after me. Dear God, you know our hurts. You know when we're scared. Help us to love others who are scared too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Well, today we're going to talk about Jeremiah. I love the Old Testament. And I don't think we talk about it enough in our, in our preaching and sharing on Sunday mornings. And Jeremiah is an amazing book of the Old Testament. And I hopefully this message will help you see why it's so amazing to be in our Old Testament. Some years ago, a friend's mother was diagnosed with cancer, and she died five days later. And that was traumatic, to say the least. Heartbreaking. I asked my friend how she was doing, and she said that she had a very odd revelation to share with me. She said when she was writing emails, and she was writing them about how she can't bear this unbearable pain. I can't bear it. Somehow, instead of typing a apostrophe in the word can't, she typed a plus sign twice. And that created the image of a cross in the middle of the word can't. 
and she had this revelation. She realized, I can't, but God can. And through the cross, God knows. God knows this unbearable pain I'm feeling. Oh, Lord, you know. That's how Jeremiah begins this passage. There's great comfort in speaking those words. These are the words of a troubled prophet. He was threatened by the people of his hometown, beaten and put into stocks, forbidden to marry the love of his life, contradicted by his prophetic colleagues in the name of God. Jeremiah struggled with King Jehoiakim, who could think of nothing better to do than remodel the palace during a siege and burn up the first draft of the prophet's books. Jeremiah bore unbearable pain, and he wrote about it. He says, God is like a brook full of water in the rainy season, but dry as dust when you are really thirsty. Wow. His petitions to God were, remember me, visit me, have mercy, do not take your grace and mercy from me. And those are thoughts and feelings and petitions I'm sure we've all shared. In life, all of us have experiences in which we bear the unbearable. It may look like these stories, an annual exam reviewing cancer, a baby dying at birth, a daughter killed in a car accident, floodwaters overtaking your city. When we bear the unbearable, we realize how little control we have over much of that which damages our society and ourselves. And out of this comes grief and rage and fear, and it flashes to the surface of our consciousness, and we're sitting there going, what do I do with this? There's a saying, Christians seldom sing in the minor key. It comes from this assumption that you don't express strong feelings around despair. Don't get upset. You just need to trust the Lord. But doubt and despair are the dark soil that is necessary to grow confidence and joy. But we ignore that wisdom. We succumb to judgment around strong feelings. The assumption is that trust precludes struggles, faith erases doubt, that hope will remove despair. So if you really love God, if you really are a good Christian, you won't complain or get upset. You'll assume that it is best not to let anyone know what you're really thinking and feeling for fear of being judged. Well, thank God that we have the private journal of the prophet Jeremiah in our library of holy texts. The prophet shows that he is merely human, full of laments that come from life's struggles, disappointments, unbearable moments. The inclusion of this material, it gives us an invitation to dare to talk about what's really bothering us, to talk straight with God about what's really happening. Not pretend that we're better off than we really are. Better to let it out 
than deny reality. However, the response of God may not be what we want to hear. Jeremiah lets it out. Why does my pain endure? Why do I bear this unbearable feeling? Why won't my misery stop? And the word of God comes to him. And the response to his outburst is that misery is not going to go away. Thanks, God. There's no vacation from his struggle. Great. But God assures Jeremiah of his presence to strengthen him, to fortify him as a bronze wall to withstand more misery. The Old Testament is filled with this prose called lament. You find it in the stories of Moses, Jeremiah, the Psalms, and of course the book called Lamentations. But in the New Testament, you have one lament that is most loud. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Filled with anguish and doubt and search and pain, we cannot take the cross out of Jesus' life experience because the cross is that place where every human being joins with God. God joins with us on our hell on earth experiences. God knows. God's been there. And as a consequence, we know that God can be trusted. So, what is a lament? It is a cry to God with our doubts, our complaints against God. And these complaints ironically create the context for surrender. And surrender is turning our hearts over to God, asking for mercy, receiving God's heart over God's terms of restoration. To put it simply, it's inconceivable to surrender to God unless you have first declared war against God. A lament is a battle cry against God that paradoxically voices a heart of desire and ironic faith in his goodness. It's strange. But when we lament to God, when we give out our battle cry, we're also crying out our faith and depth of belief. We are truly asking and seeking and knocking to understand, to comprehend God's heart. It involves an energy of search, not to shut down the quest for truth. It's the passion to ask Lament uses the language of pain and anger and confusion to move us toward God. The tension in my rubber band, the tension is actually released in the lament as we move toward God. For embedded in our cries is, if you love me, you would take this agony away. What are you doing? The curiosity, the wanting to understand. This pain initiates our search. The anger clarifies more deeply our demand for relief. The confusion opens our heart to change. Lament speaks the language of the shadow side of faith. The person who hears your lament is someone that you deeply and wildly trust. You're not going to lament to someone who could fire you or turn you away or cost you significant relationships. You don't trust them. That's not who you lament to. You lament to someone who is trustworthy. 
worthy. You lament against God because deep down you believe and have faith in God's faithfulness, God's grace, and God's mercy. You trust God with your dark side. And in doing so, communicate your deepest hurts for healing. We can know deep in our hearts that God won't give up on us, that our can't really is God's can. And we know this because of the cross. When we're bearing our unbearables, we need a God who has suffered the depth of rage and despair that we are experiencing. No other God can be trusted. Whatever the unbearable suffering, whatever the uncontrollable events that are afflicting us, causing us grief to the core of our being, God seen it, God knows. Oh Lord, you know. God knows it and has taken it into God's own life through Jesus. Jesus, who was crucified, died, descended to the hell, and raised on the third day. This is why we cannot take suffering and death and resurrection out of Jesus' story. That's why it's so important. For it says to us, not that God has removed everything that is unbearable, not that God has taken away all causes of rage and anger and worry and panic and anxiousness, not even that God controls things, but that God is the one who bears the misery and the rage with us and for us, who takes it upon, who can when we can't. By bearing the unbearable, God overcomes it and faithfully keeps the conversation open for life. My friend saw a glimpse of this when she had this realization, when she felt her weakness and weakest moments. God has a way of bursting into our hopelessness, into our laments with a cross, cross of compassion and empathy and grace and knowing. So if you are struggling to bear an unbearable, pray the simple words of Jeremiah. Oh God, you know. Just pray that. Oh God, you know. Embrace the plus sign in your can't. Cross in your isolation. Shadow of faith in your laments. For the God is truly with you. And so the community created in the image of God is with you also. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all of God's creation. We pray for the Church and its mission. Make your Church ready to lose its life for your sake. United in service, sustain it in suffering, and let its love for others be genuine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth and its well-being. Make us mindful of the gifts you have labored to give us and inspire us to commit ourselves to their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and their leaders. Overcome evil with good. Show us how to live peaceably with all. Teach us how to love our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in any need. Provide for the hungry, rescue the persecuted. Bless those who advocate for fair and safe working conditions and for just and livable wages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this community and its ministry. Move us to persevere in prayer, to extend hospitality to strangers, to rejoice with those who rejoice, and to weep with those who weep. Especially, we have prayers of sympathy for the friends and family of Kathy Brooks, and prayers of healing and wholeness for Joe Will and Myrna Rowe Parker. And also for the victims, the first responders, the representatives of government and nonprofit relief agencies, and all sorts of caregivers, including spiritual caregivers affected by Hurricane Harvey. Pray for their safety, their well-being, their faith, and their physical, mental, and spiritual health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Alpha and Omega, we give thanks for all the saints who now rest from their labors, especially Kathy Brooks. Keep us in union with them until we are joined around your throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. You may, be, you may be seated now, and we will have a time for sharing of our gifts.
God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them offered in great thanksgiving and use them to set a table that will heal the whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Amen. The Lord be with you. God, mighty, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his death. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. So send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all the saints in light. And join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place. Unite them with ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome to this table to receive this meal of forgiveness if this is what you believe. You will be invited to come forward. You may either stand or kneel along the railings, and you will receive the bread and then a cup of either the dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. There are gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know you need those. And if you need us to serve you at the pews, just let the ushers know. Come, the meal is prepared.
invite you to stand as you are able to receive the communion blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. and compassionate God. In bread and wine, you give us gifts that form us to be humble and courageous. May your words come to life in our serving and in our witness, that we might speak a living voice of healing and justice to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. may be seated for announcements. Please note the inserts that you will find in your bulletins. Among them is if you have been wondering ways in which you could help with and support people experiencing Hurricane Harvey, uh, there is an insert about the ELCA Lutheran Disaster Recovery uh, Program, and it is a good way to uh, participate in support. I think we have a Another announcement? I just want to remind everyone about the uh, neighborhood cleanup on September 16th. That's right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, from 9 to noon. And uh, basically what happens is everybody in the neighborhood comes and we dump stuff in dumpsters and stuff like that. You may notice that uh, there's something about a shredder. Uh, we run into a snag. We don't have a shredder because we checked and oh well the company who did it last time said it wasn't worth it so two things one if you have or know of a shredding company we can use let us know or show up and be prepared to rip the <laughs> paper okay deal thanks Another note uh, to mark on your calendars. Uh, next week is Sunday School Kickoff, and the week after that is our church photo directory picture. So you have two options, Saturday, September 16th from 3.30 to 5.30, or Sunday, September 17th, 7.45 a.m. to 1.30. Um, come looking pretty that day, and we'll get your picture taken. So with that, please... Stand and receive the blessing. May the power of God strengthen you. May the love of Jesus Christ heal you. And may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you, now and forever. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.